Hey everyone, Dave here, and welcome to our annual infamous tier list at this point of quest games that released where we get cancelled by the VR community, get absolutely slammed on Reddit for having different opinion than them, and just the chaos that it causes. Real talk, this is my favorite video of the year to do. It's essentially a look back and a wrap up of the whole year of my work here. Whether the games were bad or not, which spoiler alert we have a lot to talk about, is just something different that everyone does for Christmas like a top tier list. Also, I guess welcome in the mainstream, seeing all those statistics after Christmas and stuff, I was like, what the hell is going on? I've not seen that much traffic, that much money, views, like, ever. This is the most craziest thing that I've seen happening with Quest, actually. This is the time to do this. To be here, being involved into virtual reality, is just nuts. I've compared the last year's tier list and we had around 66 releases. I thought we would be in three digits this year, but apparently we have only like nine more, so it's not gonna be that bad like last year. I don't think I won't have a desire to jump through the window, but it's just fun that it's like my thing here. I added a couple things from last year, like a Z tier tier list that basically means I didn't really have that much information or I was just stuck and I couldn't really judge the whole game based on like few minutes of gameplay. So to be more fair this year, I just added that category. I switched some sizes because we have more better games and much polish than the trash content, surprisingly. My main judging is based on the level of polish, concept, gameplay dynamic, post-release support. Essentially every game competes with itself, so for example if a game is in F tier, it's their fault. Not really comparing to other titles, it's just they shit the bed and they should feel sorry about it. Let's start with Mare, C tier. It's a puzzle game that I pretty enjoyed, really unique in concept but lacking a little bit in the mechanics department and where the developers could take it. I also felt a little bit confused about the storyline which was hard to read what was going on and there's a genre of the games that rely on your own imagination and make sense out of it but it is what it is. Kizuna AI B tier, something that for my region specifically released way later because it was first in Japan. As much as I was sick of rhythm games last year, this one with mechanics and beats is good. Doesn't really reinvent the wheel, doesn't suck either so it's landing there. Jupiter Grad A tier, a project that reading just from the concept is just crazy and I didn't think that it's gonna pull off but really it is one of the better swinging games and just the soundtrack like a top tier on the store. It gets consistent updates, it works really well, the developers should be proud of themselves. Gorn, C tier. I feel like I'm gonna be hanged on a rope from that placement and we'll have a direct comparison with Blade and Sorcery. It's just Gorn didn't really give me enough variety that I expected from physics game. Everything seems fine on paper, it's just not much to it, like it's weird to say. It was also left out by the developers with literally no updates whatsoever, so I feel like I'm being non-biased here. Bowman, F tier. A complete no from me and unsurprisingly branded as the worst game of the year, everything about it is just bad. And I don't really shit on games all across the boards, but really, this one takes the cake. Katan VR, 8 tier. Now we're starting the situation where if you make a game not complex but really polished, it's gonna be high on the list because that's what I value, like the effort and work put behind it, not overselling or overhyping the projects, just make things work. Katan was great, I was never introduced to the actual board game before, but it introduced me well to the rules and it was an enjoyable experience. Vanishing Grey is D tier. I had a really Really high hopes for it. The start was strong and all, but it went downhill for me chapter by chapter. Like, the mechanics could be improved always. I really had a grip on the storyline. Like, I didn't feel good after completing it, nor was I satisfied. Like, the game can be whatever, but if it makes me feel bad, then it's just not cute at all. Crashland, A tier. I don't really play a lot of it, and for the right reasons, because it's very scary. Like, things just approach you at high speed and try to murder you. Like, as a horror genre non enthusiast, I wanted to leave this game as fast as it's possible, but that just means it's good. <laughs> Counterfight Ichiran, D tier. A little bit confusing release since it might have been like a direct advertisement for the chain of ramen shops. Mechanics wise simple, graphics eh, I guess underwhelming, and it's dead on the store anyways. Hyper Dash, S tier. An S stands for success story. This game came all the way from SideQuest to App Lab to the official store. It's crazy level of polish, has variety of shooter content, unique mechanics, consistent support, truly an amazing project. Luna, B tier. As a pretty short puzzle experience, it kinda stands as a fun and thoughtful sound and visual game. It's like from this realm of artistic stuff that have like a deeper meaning. The Climb 2, C tier. I feel like this is a good representation of overhyping something by misleading trailers that showed the PC footage even with no PC version available to play and sneaked into like a sequel project rather than like a DLC to the base game. Truth to be told, it's a little bit better, but it just didn't make sense to make the second one. Flow Weaver, C tier. I don't really have much to say about it, it's just as a puzzle person myself, it seemed fine and simple. There were things definitely that could be improved and the narration seemed more annoying than usual, but like for some reason it didn't really made me wanna play more, like a playthrough. Cosmodread, B tier. I was kinda contemplating 
wondering if I actually should put it on the list or make it a Z tier. I really played couple minutes and I could not handle more, it's so intense. Basically thanks to the sound design since it really puts you in the atmosphere of being hopelessly wandering around in the spaceship and just being traumatized by the monsters there. So it's like a very shaky B, but I hope it's like justified. Zombieland, A tier, a game that I picked up like much later after the release. It seemed very basic and like a cash grab initially, but when you actually go into it and play couple levels, it has like an addicting side of it because it's so fast paced. You don't really think much because you don't have time for it. As a rail on target shooting, it's actually pretty good and it's updated. Hand physics lab, A tier. Was that an official first hand tracking experience in the store? I think so, I don't really remember. It's like a full on tech demo of this technology and its possibilities. I think the only gripe I had with it was that I really couldn't play everything at the start. It had to be like unlocked along the way. But for hand tracking, one of the better ones. Floor plan 2, B tier. I didn't have experience with the prequel. The game seemed easy in the beginning, but I actually failed the playthrough part. I tried really hard to solve the puzzles, but for some reason it was just too much for me. So like based on the overview and stuff, it's like cool, but I don't know what went wrong with me at all. Traffic jams, C tier. Pretty funny, interesting concept. Later on, a little bit lacking in variety. I think it's fun for like a very short play sessions. It's sort of like aimed at the family content. Nothing really groundbreaking to me. Swarm, B tier. I feel like I'm very alone in it. Like it's one of the best swinging games for sure, but after the first few levels it really dumps down on the same gameplay, switched with some mechanics in between, like on the surface, great. But when you go actually deeper, you could really see the repetitiveness, the same attack patterns. I'm gonna give them that the game is really satisfying, it's just I don't feel like going back into it and I'm waiting for the multiplayer update because it really seems to be groundbreaking all across the board. Carly and the Reaper Man, A tier. If we're talking about puzzle hidden gems, Carly really represents that. I did a whole playthrough alone, but I would think the game is completely different in cop mode, it uses unique mechanics. Now to think of it, this game could be suitable for hand tracking as well. Varied difficulty level depending on your imagination. A little confusing storyline, but great game nonetheless. Wrath the Oblivion Afterlife, A tier. Another one that I considered to put in the Z tier. I would say the best graphics wise in line of slow paced jump scary horror games. Didn't play much either, but very immersive, very scary, very much not for me. <laughs> Star Wars Pinball, B tier. It's like directly catering to any Star Wars fan ever. Everything works well, the pinball is <laughs> pinball. It was basically consistent, not like breaking the mold at all for me, but also could be better. The Wizards Dark Times, B tier. I'm mostly basing this placement on the PC VR playthrough that I did. I mean, it's not like the content is different, but comparing to the first game, it's more fun, it's better, it's also more buggy, with confusing storyline that really doesn't come across at all. I feel like it's a pattern for those specific developers. Almost every game from them is lacking in that department. Dimia, S tier. A completely unsurprising placement for me. Dimia is a game of the year for many, including me, like I've spent spent so much time there, developing strategies, getting to know the community, the level of polish is actually insane, art style, support, mechanics, like I can go on and on about it, to me a staple for the quest store. Zero Caliber, B tier. I've had quite a journey with this one, it didn't really seem like it on the videos, but it was hands down the most difficult playthrough that I did that made on the channel in terms of editing, like it was pure horror to do it. The game is good now, it was a little bit rough but after a couple updates it polished few things, I actually wish I would play the whole game now. Compared Comparing to the release period, but can't change nothing about it now. Puzzle Bubble, E tier. The only reason why I'm not putting it on the F is that the game works and it's doing its thing. To me, it's just uneventful with very basic mechanics and concept leeching off of that particular universe. Forever Ball, B tier. So we were starting my actual nemesis of the channel, which is the sports genre. This game, while it kept the simplicity and arcadish mechanics of bowling, gets consistent content updates and seemed to be very liked, much similarly to how Walkabout propelled itself as being one of the best games games for quests by the community. To me it's fine, it seems a little bit amateur, very much suitable for like a social experience. Carve Snowboarding, B tier. One of its kind on the store, I do feel like could be executed much better. For a first snowboarding game officially on the store, it's actually not that bad, didn't make me play more either, so wonder why honestly. Stones of Harlaf, A tier. Definitely a hidden gem of RPGs, I would say if they would introduce like an equipment system and more actual RPG mechanics, it could end up very well on the S tier. It's so like different from what we normally are used to in VR, I'm definitely waiting for the next project of these developers because they seem to know what's up with just the design. A Rogue Escape, Z tier. That was one of the reasons why I created this whole tier, it's just I wasn't really familiar with the escape room gameplay at the time and this was not easy at all to figure it out how to play and how to progress in general. Unfortunately, not much to say about it. Larsen Outs, A tier. I feel like it doesn't really get the love it deserves overall. It screwed up big time the release day, but fastly after that the game was really fun to play and it still is. We have such short span of attention because so many things are releasing.
game that only shows you how important the day when the game drops on the store is. I do hope the tables turn around with this. Eternal Starlight, B tier. It's frankly a lost playthrough for the channel at this point. As a strategy RTS game, it seems good, it's a bit difficult to understand and get into it. You have to spend a lot of time to figure out the mechanics and what everything does specifically. I could see it higher, but at this point I pretty much forgot about it. Chess Club, B tier. I did appreciate this release for doing something more than just a basic chess game. Gave me like Harry Potter vibes with animated pieces that destroy each other on the board. I wish it could have better multiplayer features like matchmaking. I believe it got some kind of update for it. All in all, solid. Tarzan VR, E tier. A walking punting bag for VR at this point. It's so comically bad, not in the way that it gets good, but it's literally a scam of the universe. It was never updated, even though the developers promised more episodes, it never arrived. Frankly, the only reason why I'm not putting in F is because it works, but it should be there. And I'm getting pissed talking about it. Totally baseball, D tier. So I kinda got roasted for this overview, though my point still stands. We deserve a better baseball game for Quest. I'm not really sure if it got better over time, but for me, the release day was rough and memories test. Sam and Max, C tier. I was never familiar with that universe, but it really is some good comedy. Unfortunately, behind it, there's a pretty average game in terms of mechanics, and I wish this game would be made with different developers and more experience with VR to justify that universe that it deserves. Sniper Elite, B tier. The game is cool. It was pressured to be a good experience because of the sniper legacy. For me, it's like 50 50. It has a lot of good things and a lot of bad, but overall, it balances out to be like a good game for Quest, essentially. A Township Tale, B tier. I'm not really sure what's going on with this one now. Apparently, it's run down by annoying kids stealing bags and creating chaos across the servers. I wish I got more into it. It wasn't really my thing with adventure crafting survival at that point, though I wish it would get more updates in terms of features rather than cosmetic stuff to buy, but maybe that's just me. Yuki, B tier. Coming from the developers of Pixel Ripped, it was a nice change of pace, even though it stayed in the same lane in terms of art style and graphics. Bullet holes are not for me, but it seems to be a very good one for Quest, with enough variety and features to play with. Warplanes, S tier. Definitely a sleeper hit, released really suddenly because it came from SideQuest slash AppLab, really well done mechanics wise and even locomotion, still on my list to do the playthrough. Overall amazing what brings to the platform. Arksmith, C tier. Another one that I wanted to do the whole playlist is just this kind of niche puzzle that would work if it actually would work, because I was struggling with compiling the pieces and them playing off or detaching for no reason. I would say high in concept, but kinda low in execution. Stride, A tier. Our VR mirror search, if it actually would have a campaign. I will never stop saying it, but without that the game is dead to me. It's great and all, apparently it have a multiplayer in works, but this developer is known for not finishing their projects even if they're great, like, I don't get it. We'll have to see the future with it. For now, it's great, but lacking still. Disk Ninja, D tier. While it keeps high in graphics department, the actual gameplay can be a little bit buggy, therefore unplayable. Sometimes the discs would fall through the ground, swinging the disc with the strength wouldn't align with the reality. Wish it would be more polished. Goal 5 E Club, B tier. To me, if we were saying about the release day, comparing to Walkabout and Propat, this one is the best that I've tried. We all know now that Walkabout and Golf Plus are more polished versions of that sport, but again, the first day is important, and if I would wanna play something more professional, this is the one to me. Then VR Adventure, B tier. This was like our VR version of Crash Bandicoot, with less features but more graphics. I did the whole play from PC VR, with the old camera system, so maybe it would be in A tier now, seeing up close the details and being able to backtrack for the collectibles to do the 100% save file, but for that time we get that placement. I expect you to die too, S tier. The prequel was essentially my first actual try to understand escape room mechanics and getting to know the genre. While I had some gripes comparing the first game and this, nitpicking like graphics and little details, I don't think it can be anywhere else other than S tier. Still, it could be better, but it's just my high hopes for the future. <laughs> Beat Arena, B tier. It shares the same fate as Kizuna AI. It has much more variety and polish to it though. I'm not really sure why it's not being talked on the West that much, but the concept of a band and playing different instruments with it, of course, in the anime setting is pretty good, so I have like no complaints. I guess we're just done with rhythm games at this point. Puzzling Places, S tier. This is a really good example of taking a simple concept but going so overboard with it, with that level of polish, just attention to detail, coming all the way from side quest, pitch balls, literally big balls. I have nothing more to say about it, I know it takes time, but more puzzle environments, please. Paranormal Activity, Z tier. So I got stuck in the first 5 minutes of the game, that way I can't really judge it. Many people had gripes with locomotion, but it wasn't really the case with me. Sure, it was like unusual, but nothing like crazy or groundbreaking. Yeah, horror, spooky, can't say more about it. Rainbow Reactor, C tier. Looking at the list now, it really seems like the puzzle games this year were kinda lacking in general. 
I feel like Rainbow had good intentions of doing a job simulator concept, but it had some unnecessary things that kinda downgraded the gameplay for me and wasn't really interested in continuing it at all. Clash of Chefs, Sitier. If we were talking about cooking competitive games, this is it, but it's literally the only one. I'm kinda like waiting still for a fully physics based kitchen where you actually feel like being in a restaurant not with just simplified controls and features to go with as a cook myself. It's fun for a short while, offers a ton of levels, but is just average to me. Rhythm of the Universe, E tier. This game shit the bet not because of the concept and design itself, but the software execution and just the mechanics really made it unpleasant to play. I think it's pretty sad because there seemed to be some really good people behind it if it would be in the better hands of the development. Never bored, C tier. We're entering the territory of free to play games for Quest. This one is very basic concept wise, it's pretty fun, but if you make a social game and not introduce any matchmaking at all, it's just not gonna work. You can play with friends and stuff, but not many people have friends in VR, like me. It's gonna change over time, of course. But you have to think about those things and it might be a lost cause at this point. Sweet Surrender, A tier. It kinda turned around for me with the post-release updates because I couldn't really enjoy it properly before, but now it's actually pretty solid. I'm actually really interested how it's gonna revolve in the next year seeing the roadmap, but now it sits in a comfortable place. Sunky the Smoke, B tier. This is one of the ones that I'm really looking forward to play through it. It feels bad to put it in the B tier, simply because I feel like after playing couple hours I'm gonna change my mind. It really seems groundbreaking and putting new things on the table is just the overview was hard to understand what was going on and remember like crafting recipes, maybe purely because I'm not a survival person. I hope it's gonna change, but it is what it is for now. Gun Raiders, A tier. Pretty much the most beloved project out of anything on the store. If we're talking about constant updates, working on the features and mechanics, it's rated with kids, obviously, but something that's for free is a little bit crazy. Some devs should take notes of it. The only problem I have with it is just very minimal graphics, but that's pretty much it. Loco Dojo, A tier. A perfect family game to me, insanely fun in that setting, could be played with strangers as well. It very well introduces you to the social setting of VR by just playing silly games and enjoying some damp comedy with it. Shadowgate, C tier. I wanted to play it more, it's just too scary of an adventure for me. Seemed simple in the beginning, has a very good narration and the storyline, which is thanks to the previous projects of those developers, also could be improved with few things. MVP Football, E tier. My literal nemesis of the year. The overview I did on this game performs the best of anything that I've done maybe in the history of the channel. I truly believe that Mahomes himself shared my video and that's why I'm getting so many views on it and breaking a bank. Like the last few days were so crazy with statistics that I would put it in the S tier just because of that reason. But sorry, the game is bad and I don't care about the football haters that are basically overrunning this video. Like thank you, but screw you at the same time. Space Folk City, B tier. Essentially the first team building game besides Daisy that's not official, I would say the most chaotic thing that I've seen. And even for myself, I was just lost in the gameplay, but the game is cool as hell. The soundtrack just pumps. It's very unique in the art style. It's just chaos. <laughs> Apparently we have too many A tier games this year, so let me just move aside. Ragnarok, A tier. Honestly, the most fun that I've had with Rhythm Game ever. Maybe because of the music genre that's in it, but it's so dynamic and so for me. It's like purely catering to my taste and I might be a little bit biased, but the only downgrade is the graphics and the UI, but that's pretty much it. Unplugged, B tier. This project was swinging big, using the hand tracking technology. It's good, it's not perfect, had fun with it. Maybe when this technology is gonna be very much 100% with tracking that we have in the controllers now, it could be perceived as one of the best rhythm games ever. It's just not that situation for now and kinda sucks for the developer. Resident Evil 4, A tier. Just hear me out. I do appreciate everything that this game did and still does for the VR altogether. I can't place it in S tier simply because it was not made from the ground up for it. There are a lot of mechanics that are borderline unacceptable. It's a great port of a great game, but it can't be compared on the same level as things actually made for VR. The storyline and the universe are undeniably amazing, but I would not sleep well at night saying it's a game of the year or praising it more than it should be. I think 8 year all across the board is completely justified, but everyone has their own opinion on it, you know? Project Terminus, C tier. As a person that literally lives in Paris, I have a very different impression of it comparing to everyone else. If we're talking about immersion and being actually in the Persian suburb, great. The graphic department, mechanics and just features needs a lot of work. It should come down on the commitment that developers wanna put it into. For now, very average. The Secret of Retropolis, A tier. I was thinking if I should actually put it on the list. It's borderline interactive visual film experience, but it's essentially a great point and click adventure with very decent storyline and a very unique design. So it's like an honorable mention, I guess. Blade and Sorcery Nomad, B tier. I would say a better version of physics game comparing to Gorn. To me, it's a little bit lacking in content. I very much expect the crystal something, the update that's gonna arrive next year, like a progression system or even a point to play for me 
me. I don't know why, but I actually didn't notice any problems performance wise like everyone else. I was so confused because my headset tends to not perform well, but I guess I got really lucky with recording this. Captain Toonhead, CTR. I would say the most unique in terms of art style and just the concept game on the star. I wish it would be better in execution though, because as a first tower defense game, blocking the most basic things like locomotion and free movement is kinda doomed. Kudos for the trailer though, because it's one of the most funniest things I've seen in VR. Resist, 8 year. Another sleeper hit on the platform, released out of nowhere. Our Spider-Man-ish swinging open world city just coolness, like how a game like that could be released with no announcements, no hype whatsoever, but really delivering a very polished product. I'm curious about the future of it, though at this point it's still great. Medal of Honor, above and beyond, 8 year. I'm coming down from the PC VR experience and I'm one of the ones to say that it's one of the best shooters in VR gameplay wise. It's a little bit inconsistent in the storyline, though still very much enjoyable and that's pretty much what's lacking for it to be in the S tier. It was kinda a game of the year last year for me, but I wanna be reasonable and put it on the A nevertheless. Lucky style, B tier. For now I'm putting it here because the playthrough is still pending and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do it in the next days. I'm a sucker for platformers in general and Lucky seems to be pretty good in terms of introducing the storyline and even being involved in the character like most did. We'll just have to see how it's gonna go with the playlist. From the first impressions, B is fine. Smash Drums, A tier. Essentially the exact same story with Ragnarok, very much in my taste. It's more complex in the mechanics so I appreciate that. It has a social and dynamic multiplayer. It might be very well a tier but I wanna see better graphics overall, that's it. Somehow I'm running out of space on the C tier, oh my god. Zoo Keeper, C tier. I would say I didn't think that I'm gonna enjoy it as much as I did. It's cursed by the Japanese development by not having the most basic controls and settings as a Candy Crush Zo Tycoon crossover. It does its job, it could be better. Morals Homestead, D tier. I think it's just crippled by the quest platform and its capabilities. It's actually like a first real house building game where you pretty much do whatever you want, it's just the execution of it and the polish is not there to support it at all. Might be a lost cause if the developers abandon it. After the fall, 8 year. Most likely the next playthrough that I'll do. I think a lot of people are harsh on it because of the Arizona Sunshine experience being very lackluster for quest and even now with all the games much more polished for the price points should not be the place for it. After the fall does a lot of things good, it's missing couple features that would propel it to be one of the best if not the best co-op horror shooter. I just hope it's gonna be frequently updated with more things to do and not dead in the lobbies. And last release, Forever Darts. A little bit downgraded thing from the bowling. I was kinda confused why it released as a separate thing. Using hand tracking for it is kinda a no. If you wanna be a little bit competitive with it, it's the same thing. It's a social arcade game where you can just chill out with friends and enjoy some darts but nothing more. And we're done, Jesus. My throat is dry, I'm tired, let me just clean this up. I'm gonna think about certain things just to lock in place the list and not think about it afterwards. I think it's solid but maybe something will change. See you next time! Alright, it's the next day with the same clothes, mind you. I've been working my ass off on the video and I'm actually very pleased with it because I've probably put the most effort out of anything in it and I'm hard to satisfy it, so if I'm happy with myself, then it's great. I rearranged few things on the list and made it more clear in general. I actually didn't switch any placement with the games, so I'm locking it in place and I stand behind every one of them. Looking at it now, it was definitely a year of shooters, so my personal wish for the next year would be more adventure strategy RPGs, just kinda like more thoughtful in in terms of the story and the concept because slowly, like last year we had too many rhythm games, this year we kinda had copy paste shooters with the same mechanics, so we'll have to see, we already know about many titles coming up that are very promising and with every year VR gets crazier and crazier, so let's do the giveaway now, though only 4 people participated, so I don't need to do any roulette and virtual wolfie, aloe and hue, write me what game you want on the email and that's pretty much it, it's been a year. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take couple days off more just to kinda keep up on the recordings because this one took, I don't know, approximately 20 hours to do in total. It's been a lot, but it's not like I had to do it. It's my pleasure to be here and doing this. So, see you around as always.